Hey guys, this is Sean Sanders. I am coming to you with a review of Real Housewives of Atlanta. The, the episode will be down in the description box. So I have my notes. Let's get to it. So I thought that this was going to be a good episode, but it was, eh, it was okay. But let's just do a recap. It's not going to be long. So Portia was babysitting for Phaedra, which I thought was funny because I know how I watch other people's kids and they are under the age of eight and she looked like she was going to go to, you know, have a weekend brunch. She didn't look like she was going to be dealing with little kids, but all right, you know, I, I, I'm not going to be mad. Portia is always camera ready. So th that's who she is. Uh, Cairo is getting into modeling and Sheree is momager. And he is doing some pictures for his um, portfolio to take to agencies. And y'all, okay, so look at this here. So here's my swan, see this? So if you haven't watched um, Narob on YouTube, and I agree with her, um, you know, being a swan, Cairo is definitely a swan. He was not the most, you know, he has grown into his looks. You know, we're not going to talk about kids, but if anybody has watched Real Housewives of Atlanta from the beginning, Cairo, we weren't quite sure how he was going to turn out. And he has turned out to be a a, a very, very handsome man. And uh, y'all need to leave. Y'all, you know who you are. Uh, y'all need to leave Mr. Cairo alone. You know, he is barely legal. I mean, he's legal. First, Portia was l lusting after him. Uh, then Andy was lusting after him. And now Cynthia trying to get her Stella got her groove back, which is fine. But you should not, you know, eat where you crap kind of thing. And not be looking at him with those kind of lustful eyes. Sheree's going to jack you up. So y'all need to leave him alone. Y'all want to dip in some young pool. You need to be out of the circle. I'm just saying. Anyway, so uh, the next thing is um, we are now dealing with the aftermath of Kenya and Matt. And she's talking to her dad. And, you know, she's, um, you know, in light of everything that's going on with Kenya, I am happy to see that there is has been an evolving of the relationship between her and her dad. It, in the beginning, about a season, maybe two seasons ago, it was very contentious. It was very, very awkward, and he was holding a lot of resentment. But you can clearly see that behind the scenes, they have been really working towards mending uh, hurt feelings about her past, her childhood with her dad, about her dad being resentful because, um, you know, at one point he wanted to have all his children with him and Kenya wasn't feeling that. She was very uncomfortable and she decided to move back to Detroit and he harbored a lot of feelings about that. But it's very clear that um, they have a very genuine relationship. She's talking to her dad about uh, Matt and uh, I don't know, I just like it. I mean, she needs to have somebody in her life. You know, I said before, um, it doesn't seem like Lord, uh, Aunt Lori is in the picture. Um, she seemed to have a really bad taste in her mouth after Kenya on camera tried to confront her mother. And, and since then, we have not seen uh, Aunt Lori on camera, who was a, a very strong figure for her in her life and she has kind of stepped back maybe they still have conversations but she's not on camera like she used to be and now that her dad and is um they've mended fences it looks like they have a really good relationship um so i like that for her she needs someone that she can go to candy and her crew are cackling about this phaedra bomb thing so we're going to move on past that because they, they're not feeling it for Candy. So there's nothing else to talk about. Candy's not believing the bomb thing. The crew thinks she's full of crap. So what else is there to talk about? Phaedra talks to um, Drama's mama, who was the young man who um, was alleged to have the bomb threat. And, uh, you know, <laughs> on a side note, listen, I don't, know how, I don't know how to say this without feeling like I'm judging someone. I'm just talking to my people. I'm just talking to my people, okay? When when we are outside of a street setting, 
We really need to put that corporate talk on, okay? I'm just saying, if you're from the street, if you're hood, you need to, to have some semblance of something higher than Ebonics, and you need to be able to walk into an office and convey what you want to convey without all of this going on. Now, let's just say for the simple fact that he was uh, mistaken for saying bomb and, and people didn't understand uh, the street talk. But here we go. This is a PSA. You know, learn when to turn off the street talk when you're walking in an office. That's all. Okay. So what I was waiting for was Candy and Phaedra to meet up because I thought that that was going to be the only good part of uh, this whole episode. Um, Todd, which is Portia's boyfriend, is having dinner with the fam. Lauren is grilling. I did not like the wig that her mother was wearing. Just a side note. And, uh, you know, Todd said that he's happy. He's he's in love with her. And, um, you know, I thought it was cute for what it is. For on Portia, she's thinking that she's normally the one to jump first to say I love you. Which I, I see her being someone who dates fast. You know, she, she can't be alone and she dates fast and she falls in love quick. Quickly, I'd have to find out from Narob what is her sign because there must be something about her. She's a serial dater and she wants to, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, I think about when you were like 14 years old, 14, 15 years old and you had a crush on a boy and you'd be writing on the back of your loose leaf binder, you know, It'd be like Sean and David or Karen and... Chris with a heart and in love forever and it just seems like for Portia it's very much she's in love with love not understanding necessarily that you got to roll up your sleeves and do the work but she's in love with being in love and that is you know her high because you know with Dookie last season he was her MVP and she had a party and everybody was looking at her like she was crazy and in her in her by her admission she's saying she's doing a different approach and i go okay that's fine cuz you know they say what insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results so she's saying that she's doing something different and this time the the man took the lead in saying that he loved her so you know i love love i hope she finds what she's looking for there you go so um I like I like Kenya's dad. He has no filter. You know, he was a little harsh on her before because in her apartment like two seasons ago, he was not impressed. And um but this time he really, you know, he he when he he's not a middle of the road guy. He's all or nothing. He either likes it or he doesn't. You know exactly where you stand with his dad, with her dad. So he, you know, he was really impressed. And um, she's talking about Matt, and Matt was um, stalling, but they meet up later. So we're going to fast forward to Phaedra and Candy. Now, I had said in a video that, um, what was it? Oh, yeah, that Kenya had done a, I believe, a Facebook Live. And she had mentioned that Candy and Phaedra are not friends, and it's very clear. Like, when you look at the past uh, seasons, how they were just the ride-or-die chicks, and they're looking at each other, and there is this awesome silence. You know, Candy didn't come playing around. She's like, why am I here? And she said it, and I tweeted. She's like, well, we're not friends. So I was like, okay. So for all of you guys who are hoping that this relationship is mended, as far as Candy's concerned, they are not friends. Now, I will say I had stepped out. I was finishing up dinner. So the one thing that I wanted to see, I didn't get to see the whole thing. So put in the comments if I missed anything. But Candy is just not here for it. And, you know, it, it kind of explains the demise of their friendship. I think that for a, a lot, I think on Candy's side, Candy is a loyal friend. And that even if you're fe feeding her BS, she will take it for what it is because she's a loyal friend. And even though she's not really believing what you're saying, she's going to keep the secrets buried. But now that they're not friends, 
She's like, you can't feed me what you've been feeding everybody because I've been privy to who you are and I'm just not going for it. So I'm not the one. That is the kind of attitude that I got from her. And, you know, Phaedra is trying to be like, I don't appreciate what your mom did. I don't appreciate how she approached me. And you know you can't come for Candy's mama. But I don't even think Candy even cares that her mama, I mean, she cared enough to not want to start a scene on camera. But I don't think she really cares about the fact that her mom was coming for her because she's like, what is what has been said has already been said. It's been public knowledge. So me talking about it doesn't make any difference. And I knew that she was still resentful about the comments that she said last season about Todd, about going into the cows for change and him being put on allowance. See, I told you this before. Check out some of my, my uh, I don't do a lot of reviews, but I'm telling you, I'm, I'm the same way. You know, talking about somebody's spouse, it, you're asking, you're asking for it. And on a side note, this thing with Married to Medicine, with Lisa and Heavenly, I'm telling you, I could not go for it. Now, I don't condone violence, but sometimes you just have to be, you just have to make your point known. And, you know, for Lisa, Lisa needs to go Tammy Roman on Heavenly just real quick, fast and be done because people need to know, even if it's true, if I haven't said anything, you don't need to be talking about my husband. You keep my husband's name out of your mouth. I'm not talking about your husband. You leave my husband alone because you're asking. It's just like you're asking for someone to come out of character. And I'm not a violent person. I'm not someone that is one to pop off. But you start talking about my kids. You start talking about uh, my husband. You start talking about things that are really, really personal. And we're not cool like that. You're asking for someone to go off. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so uh, I did not see the rest of it, but I saw the, the previews of next week, and Sheree is being messy boots. She being real messy, y'all. All right, so that's all I have for Real Housewives of Atlanta. It's going to be a direct upload. I have a video coming up. I did my little snapshot for my weekend, so I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to upload it tomorrow. I'm going to do a direct upload uh, for this. Take care of yourself and each other. Have a wonderful night. Bye. Oh, and on a side note, why is Married to Medicine on a rerun after Real Housewives of Atlanta? Is anyone else pissed off about that? Because they obviously could have kept that on. I thought they were just doing it because of Mariah Carey's thing, but it's very clear they're trying to get this Med Married to Medicine Houston thing going. So they put it on Friday, but now we see the reruns on Sunday. I'm not really happy about that, but it is what it is. So again, take care of yourself and each other, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.